Hi, it's Bernadette Jansen speaking. Um, this is the second session of the renovating Renovation Profit Blueprint mini course, and I want to welcome you on the call tonight. Uh, before I start, I want to clarify a couple of things that I may not have um, covered very well last week, um, and it's important. When you're renovating a property to sell, you're not focused so much on capital growth or looking for property where you'll get capital growth um, like you normally would when you're buying an investment property because that's actually what you're setting out to do. You want to create uh, capital growth with your renovation. But it is important to understand property cycles because um, if you buy at the peak of a cycle and the values fall, that will eat into your profit. The ideal is to buy when it's on its way up. Generally, prices don't move as quickly as the media would have you believe, but a falling market will make properties with negatives much harder to sell, which can then give a distorted view of prices. Thanks to anyone that sent in questions. Um, I've answered most of them, but I have one from Brooke Watson that I haven't answered and I thought I would hold off and answer it now. Her question was why we decided to auction our home our, that we have on the market at the moment. And there was no, I just want to tell you, there was no science to it. My reason was because uh, I really like auction as a selling tool. And also that the market was coming out of the doldrums. Our property is a bit unusual. And I was interested to see how it would go in an open public auction. There are a lot of issues going on in our suburb at the moment. The third railway line, which is um, causing a, well, proposed third railway line, causing a lot of grief amongst um, the locals. Uh, the rail tunnel that's going under the suburb to take the railway line from oh, the city to Castle Hill. And some local agents have been quoting very low buying guides, like one to 200,000 below value to get interest in their properties. So it's going to be interesting to see how we go because we've not done that. Um, we know the value of the property and have been up front, which may be marketing suicide, but we'll see how we go. Um, it's a good time to experiment because it's our own home and we're not we've not got any holding costs so there's absolutely no pressure to sell so um our other property is still rented out and we won't give the tenants notice until we've got a contract anyhow so that's the response to that question so um we'll get on with it okay session two Tonight we're going to be talking about identifying an area to work in, then delving deep into the research that gives you the data you need to be confident and minimise the risk in your renovating. The other topic tonight is crafting your renovating blueprint temp template, which really is just a contorted way of saying you make up lists to take when you go shopping for a house. I always like to start with an empowering quote, and I thought this one was very appropriate. This pro quote rings so true to me. Before I discovered research, I really didn't know what I was doing. And it's from Albert Einstein. What he says is, if we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be called research. Research is the key to predicting your outcome, and that takes us to the next slide. So here we've got the main criteria for identifying an area to work. First one's proximity. Proximity in this, I mean proximity to where you live. I like to work close to home and I would strongly advise it if you can manage it. Of course, it does depend on finances. Uh, and if you do work in the suburb that you live in, don't be fooled into thinking you don't need to research you'll be surprised to find out what you didn't know about the area you live in. The other proximity is proximity to the city or the CBD, especially in a place like Sydney. The areas with the best level of activity are normally within 10 kilometres of the CBD, but 
here in Sydney, we have two epicentres, Sydney City and Parramatta. So you've really got two areas to sort of work out from. The other thing I should mention is that if there is enough activity to work in just one suburb, that's perfect. But if there isn't, then you probably need to work it over a couple of suburbs or areas. Uh, you may need to cast your net a bit further. So the second criteria is affordability, uh, which I've touched on. But basically, you need to find an area that um, fits your budget, and and if you you know, and if it's not the area you live in, then you just need to look further afield until you find one. That is suitable. Your third criteria is uh, sufficient disparity between unrenovated and renovated properties. Not every area is suitable. Suburbs where there are new land releases, keeping the price of established homes down, are not suitable because there's no room for profit. There are also other suburbs where not enough buyers will pay for improvements and Wherever it is you are, that you once you've done your research, you'll know whether your suburb is viable or not. The fourth criteria is an active real estate market. You want a lively market where in terms of volume and days on the market um, supports your activity. You don't want to be sitting around waiting for months for a property to sell or you don't want to spend months trying to find a property that you can renovate. Fifth criteria, suitable level of home ownership. If you're looking at a at renovating to sell, you need to be looking at an area with a high percentage of owner-occupied properties. If it's a rental, you want a high percentage of renters with a low vacancy rate. And the last one, no huge negatives. Like soil contamination springs to mind, prisons, high crime rates, and areas and flight paths are some to consider. Okay, so the objectives of your research, firstly, to know your market, uh, know the group of people that um, are likely to be buying your renovation, their age, nationality, whether they're single or married, how many children, employment, interests and features they like in a property. The second objective is to confidently know prices in your buying and selling bracket in the local real estate market and the factors that will affect the price. And the last thing, factors that will affect your renovating. This is things like zoning, council requirements, water board requirements and so on. Sorry, my slides got a bit out of kilter. Now it's time to dive into the detail. Start by setting up a means of recording the data. You may be able to rely on your memory for the first few houses, but after that they'll blend into one another. Doesn't matter whether it's cloud-based or pen and paper, whatever works for you, and then you get online. Now if you're short on time, you can outsource this part of the research. I have a VA who does this for me and it costs very little. If you don't have anyone to do it for you, you can post it as a job on sites like Airtasker or you can do it yourself. Um, I'm currently uh, researching a new area because we're moving house. And so I, I've actually got my VA to do the statistics on every suburb within five kilometres of our new home. I started with a really basic scan um, and then narrowed it down a bit. And from that, I've pulled out a handful of suburbs to investigate further. But the data I got her to get in the first instance was percentage of home ownership, percentage of houses to units, number of sales per year, population and council area. I've done a short screencast to show you this in a bit more depth. If you're interested, you can go to the website. Halfway down the home page, you'll see a button called for free training, if you don't already know it. 
click it and it will take you to the page. And then the second thing down is tip on how to know what area to renovate. So if you just click it and it'll take you to the screencast and you'll see something like this image up on the screen here, um, but it, it will, I'll just um, talk you through what I was, um, what I look at in, in that particular set of figures. Okay, so where are we? So um, while you're online, do a Google search of the suburb, find out, you know, what sort of things come up about, you know, things that have gone on in the suburb and you'll get lots of bits of information about the area. Then go to the council website where you'll find a huge amount of information on what's going on in your area, what's proposed, the zoning and planning info. I do, with zoning and planning um, information, though, it's, it's better to go in and talk to a planner because uh, I don't know whether you've ever tried to find um, information, that sort of information on the council website, but you actually have to go through quite a few documents to find what you want. It's quite a tortuous task, so it's much quicker and easier to go and talk to a planner. Um, and, yeah, basically there's a lot about services and things that are going on in the area that can be of benefit to your um, the information you're gathering. Uh, also, um, get a Google satellite view of the suburb. This will give you a picture of the lie of the land, the block sizes, um, the roads, the topography, all valuable information for you getting an understanding of your area.